The world ocean hides many mysteries and enigmas. After storms and tides, some of them end up on the shore, puzzling even scientists. In this video, you will get acquainted with the most astonishing finds on beaches. Enjoy your viewing. For several years, residents of various cities in Northern Europe have been finding strange rubber blocks washed up on the shore. All of these tiles had a single word on them, Chipotier. The popularity of rubber blocks began back in 2012. At that time, Tracy Williams from Cornwall, England, found a strange rubber tile measuring 30 by 40 centimeters on the beach. A few days later, she found a second identical block in the same place. This piqued the woman's interest in these objects, and she started looking for information about them online. The search yielded nothing, so she decided to post about her find on social media. Surprisingly, she soon started receiving messages from people who had also found similar rubber blocks. They were from different countries, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Ireland, and others. One of the first rubber tiles was discovered back in the 1990s in France. Experts also became interested in these unusual finds and decided to investigate these slabs. They were made from the hardened resin of gutta percha trees resembling rubber. The age of this material was estimated to be 100 years. This fact led to numerous speculations about the origin of the blocks. Among them was even a version that they could have been part of the cargo of the Titanic. While experienced specialists and just curious people were proposing the most whimsical versions, a 13-year-old boy named Aaron James from Plymouth, UK, came close to solving this mystery. The boy showed the block to his geography teacher named Tim Gulfstream, and they started their investigation together. First, they found out that gutta percha trees grow in Australia and the islands in Southeast Asia. Then they started checking companies that produced this material. Eventually, they learned that there was a small factory in Indonesia called Chipotir, which closed in the 1940s. But how did the blocks end up in different parts of Europe? The boy and his teacher also found an answer to this question. In May 1917, a Japanese cargo ship carrying these rubber blocks was sunk by the German submarine U-88. All this happened near the Sicilian islands. Thus, the 13-year-old boy and his teacher managed to unravel the mystery of the origin of these rubber slabs. In 2011, 13-year-old Forrest Shepard discovered a skull of an ancient walrus on a beach in Santa Cruz, California, which is about 5 million years old. Forrest, despite his young age, had long been fascinated by fossil hunting. However, until this incident, he had only managed to find ancient shells, shark teeth, and whale bones. This find became a matter of pride for the teenager and a sensation for Californian scientists. The skull, encased in a giant boulder, was handed over for research. The process of cleaning it from the fossil took a long time, as it required the rock to be removed as carefully as possible. Eventually, scientists obtained an astonishing specimen of the ancient animal's skull. This species of walruses was previously unknown to science. It was named after Forest Shepherd, Valenictus shepherdi. Unlike modern walruses, this species had no teeth, but it also had large tusks. The size of this species significantly exceeded that of modern walruses. In October 2011, a local resident called the Sarasota County Police in Florida to report that a man had been washed ashore at Siesta Key Beach. But don't worry, it wasn't a real person, but a giant Lego figure. The minifigure was 2.5 meters tall, it was dressed in red trousers and a t-shirt with the inscription, No Real Than You Are. On the back of the figure, there was also the inscription, Ego Leonard. One might assume that this was the Lego man's name. However, he was not the only one of his kind. Similar figures appeared on other beaches in the USA, the Netherlands, and the UK. All of them had the same inscription on their back, indicating the artist's signature. The Lego Corporation immediately stated, that it had no connection to these figures. However, information about his installations can be found on the artist Ego Leonard's website. 
The creator of the minifigures does not reveal his real name, but some experts believe that the pseudonym hides the Dutch artist Leon Keer. The first such figure was found in August 2007 in the Netherlands and the last one in 2015 in Austria. Since then, the artist has stopped creating his installations. In June 2020, two Spanish biologists were walking along Matalascanas Beach after severe storms. They noticed numerous strange human footprints deeply imprinted on the surface. Naturally, the scientists were seriously intrigued by this discovery and began their investigations. They were able to determine that these footprints were about 150,000 years old and most likely belonged to Neanderthals. This news was sensational, as these footprints are the oldest record of Neanderthal presence on the Iberian Peninsula. A total of 87 footprints were found on the beach, 37 of which accurately conveyed the shape of the feet. The length of the footprints varied from 12.5 to 28 centimeters. This allowed scientists to ascertain that the Neanderthals who walked this territory ranged from 101.5 to 150 centimeters in height. This indicated that the footprints were left not only by adults, but also by children. Judging by their shape, the children were jumping and possibly dancing at the time. The scientists speculated that the footprints were left while the adults were hunting for mollusks, and their children were simply frolicking near the water. Lady Elizabeth, an iron bark with a displacement of 1155 tons, was built in 1879 in England. For a long time, this vessel traveled literally all over the world, delivering various cargoes. On December 4, 1912, near Cape Horn, the bark encountered a severe storm. As a result of this incident, four members of its crew were lost overboard. Lady Elizabeth suffered significant damage to its deck fittings, keys, and other parts. The ship's captain decided to take the vessel to the nearest port for repairs and headed for the Falkland Islands, but about 24 kilometers from Port Stanley, the ship struck a rock and was irreparably damaged. Later, Lady Elizabeth was bought by a company that purchased damaged vessels and was used as a floating warehouse. In 1936, during a storm, the bark was torn from its anchor and continued to drift until it reached its current location, Whalebone Cove. Now, despite its unfortunate history, Lady Elizabeth is in relatively good condition. Its lifeboats and the main anchor handle are still preserved. The current owner of the vessel tried to convert it into a kind of museum, but failed to secure funding, so the bark continues to simply sway on the waves. In 2007, residents of the Dutch islands Terschelling and Ameland witnessed an unusual phenomenon. All the beaches of the islands were covered with a huge amount of unripe bananas. Initially, people didn't know what to do with them, but then decided to collect the fruits and donate them to a zoo. But where could all these bananas have come from? The answer was provided by Gosa Beerda, an official from the island of Terschelling. According to him, during a severe storm, a cargo ship transporting a large consignment of bananas from Cuba was damaged. About six large containers with fruits ended up in the North Sea. After the storm, their contents were washed ashore on these islands. The authorities agreed with the residents' suggestion to donate the bananas to a zoo, but they first contacted the Maritime Insurance Company to clarify the matter. It was recommended not to consume the fruits, as they had been in seawater for some time. The islanders are used to finding various objects washed up on the beaches after storms, but the banana incident was a first for them. Interestingly, this location was chosen for the promotion for a reason. The Jurassic Coast is a UNESCO World Heritage Site known for a large number of archaeological findings from the dinosaur era. Thus, the 13-meter dragon skull perfectly conveys the atmosphere of the Jurassic Coast. Deep sea dwellers often look like they are characters from horror movies, a prime example of such grotesque ocean monsters is the football fish. Imagine the surprise and fear of visitors to Crystal Cove Park in California when they discovered a round black creature about 40 centimeters in diameter 
on the shore on Friday the 13th. People rushed to take photos of the unknown monster. It later turned out to be a football fish. These fish are a type of angler fish. They live at depths of more than 1,000 meters. Their bodies have a round shape resembling a ball. These fish exhibit pronounced sexual dimorphism. Females can reach 60 centimeters with a very large mouth and several rows of teeth. Males, on the other hand, are less impressive in size and fearsome appearance. Like all anglerfish, football fish have a bioluminescent lure on their heads. They use it to attract their prey. Football fish were first discovered by the zoology professor Johann Reinhardt in 1837. Since they inhabit great depths and are very sedentary, it is almost impossible to encounter them on the shore. This only happens when a fish dies and its body is washed ashore. Megalodons were arguably the most terrifying predators ever to exist on Earth. These massive fish, which could reach lengths of 18 meters, went extinct about 3 million years ago, yet people continue to find their remains. These sharks got their name from their large teeth. Megalodon translates from Greek as big tooth. Indeed, the teeth of these fish were impressive, with a single tooth measuring over 11 centimeters in length. With such weaponry, megalodons could hunt any marine dweller. People do indeed occasionally find megalodon teeth. One such instance occurred in 2022 in Maryland. A nine-year-old girl named Molly Sampson became the fortunate finder of an ancient predator's tooth. According to Molly, she has been interested in fossil hunting for a long time. Her parents noticed she had a knack for it, so they decided to gift her a professional-grade insulated suit for Christmas. The very next morning, she went to the beach in it to look for new finds. That day, she found a 12-centimeter megalodon tooth. She didn't leave it at home, but, together with her parents, donated it to a maritime museum. Remarkably, the girl found the tooth in the water, so she didn't even have to conduct any excavations. Lancet fish are one of the largest species of fish living in the deep waters of the ocean. Typically, these deep-sea dwellers are almost impossible to encounter, but in recent years, people have periodically found them dead on the shore. In May 2023, a resident of Oregon shared a photo of a large fish with her followers on Twitter. This creature had an elongated body shape and a wide mouth. Some users quickly identified it as a lancet fish. This woman's case was not unique. Many residents of the West Coast began to find similar fish on the shore. But what caused such mass die-offs of lancet fish? Unfortunately, scientists have not yet found an answer to this question. It's quite possible that for some reason, these fish voluntarily leave the deep waters and head towards the shore where they meet their demise. Lancet fish are among the largest deep sea dwellers in the ocean. Their body length can reach two meters. They have elongated bodies with high dorsal fins and a wide mouth with sharp teeth. These fish are poorly studied, but it is assumed that they are predators. Lancet fish are not commercially fished, as their gelatinous flesh is very unpalatable. Driftwoods are usually referred to various logs that have been in the water for a long time. This guy was lucky enough to see a very large piece of floating wood, which was washed up on a beach in California after a storm. Admittedly, seeing such a giant, it's hard to just walk by, so the guy decided to take a couple of photos of the driftwood and capture it on video. According to him, the diameter of the tree was about two meters. However, despite its attractiveness, this driftwood could not be left on the beach due to its size, so the guy contacted specialized services for cleaning the coastline from various debris washed ashore. A few days later, the tree was removed from the area. In November 2023, a woman vacationing on Quinns Rocks Beach in Western Australia found an unknown creature washed ashore, nicknamed the Blob due to its round shape. Just look at these photos and try to guess what it could be. Agree, it's not easy. The woman posted her pictures on a social network, trying to find out the name of this creature. Several locals who were unfortunate enough to experience its sting responded to her post. It turns out, a coffin ray or numbfish was washed ashore. 
These animals are a type of ray capable of delivering an electric shock of up to 200 volts. One user shared a story about his encounter with this ray. According to him, an octopus tried to attack the creature but received a fatal electric shock. All this happened near this person, who also had to experience the shock. Coffin rays are endemic to Australia. They live at depths of up to 80 meters. Their length usually does not exceed 40 centimeters. This species is a voracious predator that primarily feeds on benthic bony fish. As you can see, the waters of the world's oceans hide many amazing creatures with fantastic appearances. At the beginning of 2021, a worker at the Rutland Water Nature Reserve, located in the English county of Rutland, made a stunning discovery. During landscaping works at the reservoir, Joe Davis discovered strange bumps on the bottom of the water body. He then speculated that they could be fossils of an ancient animal. So the entire park staff team embarked on a kind of excavation. It turned out that these remains belonged to a dinosaur. To accurately identify the find, paleontologists from the University of Manchester were invited. They explained that the remains belonged to a 10 meter long ichthyosaur. This discovery was sensational because it was the first time such a well-preserved and complete skeleton of these dinosaurs had been found in Great Britain. Scientists believe that its age is over 180 million years. Ichthyosaurs were an order of extinct marine reptiles. Surprisingly, despite their similarity to fish and dolphins, they were reptiles. They had an elongated snout, large eyes, and limbs that had turned into flippers. On average, their length was two, four meters. But in the history of paleontology, there is a case of finding an ichthyosaur skeleton with a body length reaching 23 meters. In 2016, a rather strange incident occurred in the United Arab Emirates. A melon was washed ashore at Al Khan Beach in the city of Sharjah. It might seem unremarkable, but this fruit had strange inscriptions on its rind and was pierced with numerous pins and nails. The people who found this melon immediately called the police to the scene. After inspecting the suspicious object, the police believed the fruit to be cursed. For this reason, they asked clergy to purify the voodoo object. After several rituals, the fruit was cut into pieces. The nails and pins were removed, and the rind with the inscription was carefully peeled off. What exactly was written remains unknown, as experts had never encountered such hieroglyphs before. It's entirely possible that someone did this to the fruit just for fun. However, the locals didn't find it funny and took the melon as a genuine object of voodoo. If it was indeed a joke, the person behind it was lucky that the police couldn't find him. Few of you are unfamiliar with the character from the comic series, the Red Cat named Garfield. Many different toys have been made with his image, including telephones. It's precisely such toys that the residents of the French region of Brittany have been finding for almost 30 years. All this time, so many Garfield phones were washed ashore that the beaches occasionally had to be cleared. At least 200 such plastic cats were washed ashore each year. But where could all these toys come from? Many French people pondered this mystery for a long time. Local volunteers dreamed that one day the invasion of these phones would end, but it never happened until a man named René Morvan confessed that he knew where these toys came from. According to him, back in the 1990s, he discovered a huge container underwater filled with children's phones. He decided not to tell anyone about his find, fearing that he might have broken some law. But almost 30 years later, his conscience plagued him, and he showed the volunteers where the container was. And now, the story of the plastic phones has finally ended. After storms, a lot of plastic debris often ends up on the coast. However, in 2017, residents of Norfolk, England, were puzzled by the appearance of four giant pipes on the shore. Their sizes were indeed colossal. The smallest of them was 200 meters long, and the largest was 480 meters long, almost five times the height of Big Ben. But where could these pipes have come from? 
This question greatly intrigued the local residents. The authorities in Norfolk provided the answer. It turned out that the pipes were manufactured in Norway and were supposed to be delivered to Algeria. However, they became detached during towing. The authorities assured the region's residents that the pipes posed no environmental danger, as they would soon be removed by specialized companies. Indeed, this was done. However, some locals still managed to walk on the surface of the giant pipes and capture them on their cameras before they were removed from the beach. In 2016, photos of the enormous tanker Tamaya 1 washed up on the West African coast surfaced online. Residents of Liberia were incredibly surprised to see such a vessel and decided to check if there was anyone on board. After a thorough inspection, they found the tanker to be deserted and contacted the police. The investigation revealed that the tanker was registered in Panama. It was last seen in Gambia, en route to Dakar two weeks before it ended up on the Liberian shore. The police concluded that the owner of the vessel had gone bankrupt and could not afford to pay the crew. However, this assumption did not explain why the ship was abandoned. Authorities from other countries took an interest in the story. After inspecting the vessel, it became clear that it had been looted. Hence, the involvement of African pirates was considered. Piracy is still prevalent in West Africa, but this illegal activity has declined due to falling oil prices and armed conflicts. It is possible that Tamaya 1 was indeed attacked by pirates and its crew members were killed. Imagine walking on an unfamiliar beach and suddenly spotting something very large and strange in the distance. As you approach, you realize it's a huge skull, a dragon skull. You might be surprised, but there indeed is such a beach. It's located in the English county of Dorset, and since recently, it has been home to a dragon's skull. The skull looks so realistic that one might think it's genuine. In fact, it's just an installation set up to promote the famous series Game of Thrones. Three sculptors worked on the creation of the dragon remains for two months. They meticulously tried to replicate every element of the skull as it might have been if dragons indeed existed on our planet. In December 2019, the sculpture was delivered to the Jurassic Coast. In 2016, a fisherman from Auckland, New Zealand, went fishing at Muriwai Beach. There, he saw a strange object washed ashore by the waves. Approaching closer, he was shocked by what he saw. The object resembled a monster, completely covered with white protrusions, having a shell and tentacles. The tentacles were constantly moving, so the fisherman understood that it was a living creature. Other people saw the object that day too. Some of them captured the unknown creature and posted their photos online. Users shared their guesses about the creature. Some thought it was a monster that had emerged from the ocean depths, but most believed it was not a single creature, but many small unknown animals. It soon became known what was found on the shores of Murawai. It turned out to be driftwood inhabited by a colony of gooseneck barnacles. Gooseneck barnacles are stalked crustaceans that attach themselves to various objects in the water using special appendages. They get their name from the shape of their shells, which resemble duck beaks. Interestingly, these crustaceans are considered a delicacy in the sea, known as Persebes. In mid-December 2023, a resident of Margate, England, named Matthew Jacob was walking along the beach when he noticed a row of chairs on the shore. He thought they were airplane seats from a plane that might have crashed. He shared his discovery on TikTok, where he has over 14,000 followers. His followers agreed that the chairs could have ended up in the sea after an aviation disaster and began speculating on which plane they could belong to. Among the theories were Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, which disappeared over the Pacific Ocean in 2014, and Transworld Airlines Flight 800, which exploded near New York in 1996. These speculations could have been plausible, but a few days later, the police were quick to dispel rumors of an airplane crash. In their view, the rusty chairs had previously been in a train, not an aircraft. Likely, an old carriage was dumped into the sea to create an artificial reef. After a long time in the water, the chairs broke off and were washed ashore. 
Since 2017, witch bottles have been appearing along the Gulf Coast in the USA. In November 2023, a resident of Texas named Jace Tunnel discovered another such vessel, marking it the eighth one found. People who have found witch bottles admit they are afraid to open them. This is primarily due to superstitions, but also because the contents of such bottles are usually very unpleasant. The history of witch bottles began in the Middle Ages when people believed in the existence of witches and feared them. To protect themselves from curses, they made a kind of amulet, a glass bottle filled with nails, hair, nails, herbs, and even biological fluids. It was believed that this way, all the witches' spells would be placed into the bottle, and if the bottle was thrown into a furnace, all the curses would turn back on the witch. However, if the bottles were placed in a furnace, how could they end up in the ocean? This remains unknown. In 2010, a Washington state resident decided to take a morning walk on La Push Beach. There, she discovered a section of a huge trunk of a giant red cedar washed ashore. According to her, the length of this driftwood was over 25 meters. The photograph shows how small she appears next to it. But the size of the tree was not the most amazing part. The woman also mentioned that she saw strange letters and hieroglyphs on the trunk, the meanings of which she did not know. She shared her story online, trying to decipher the mysterious message. Most users suggested that the cedar was a sort of death stone that our ancestors used as a warning about severe droughts. Who knows? Perhaps this hypothesis was correct. And that's all from me. If you like this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Bye.